my name is Kevin Yor. I'm going to take you on a quick walkthrough of the website and how you should use the course to develop your musicianship skills. The first thing you should do when you log into the website is click the schedule tab. You'll see it right here. If you click this, you'll get a page that looks very similar to this. It should look almost identical to this. You'll notice it says weekly schedule, the musical core. It's not really a weekly schedule. Since this is a public course, what you will need to do is work on each one of these levels located under the schedule heading until you can get a 90% or higher on everything listed in each level. So if we click on level one, you can see that you need to work on level one until you're able to complete both the ear training and the music theory drills with a 90% or higher. That's very important. If you don't get a 90% or higher and ideally 100% or higher, you should not move on to level two. And so if it takes you one day to complete level one, that's fine. If it takes you four months to complete level one, that's fine too. The important thing is you just complete the drills that are available to you on a daily basis, work through them slowly, and make progress daily. The thing about training the ear is that you can't develop a good ear overnight. It takes time. So you'll probably find level one, if you've never done any type of ear training before, will be the most difficult level for you. As you continue, it should get a little bit easier. Developing your ear is going to be the hardest part of this course. The music theory you should be able to learn because it's just a cognitive skill. It's just learning information. But developing the ear is an entirely different type of training that really requires you to just spend a lot of time subtly and casually listening to these intervals that you're going to be introduced to, these different sounds we have in music, and learning to identify them by ear. So it's okay if this course takes you a very long time to complete. The important thing is that you just take your time, complete all of the exercises that are available to you, and ideally work on your exercises at least once per day. So your exercises. The first one will be available under the assignments tab. If you click on level one, it'll take you to a page where you can see your ear training drills and your music theory drill. For the first unit, there's only one ear training drill and one music theory drill. As you advance, there's going to be more than one music theory drill and more than one ear training drill to help you refine your ear and develop. If we click on the ear training drill, what will happen is a new page will open up. Once the page opens up, if you click on the instructions, it tells you how to complete each drill. So the instructions will expand when you click on that. It says the drill tests your ability to compare two chords. When listening to the audio, both a major and minor triad will be played in a random order. If the first interval is a major triad, then select major triad. If the first interval is a minor triad, then select minor triad. For the first ear training drill, you're not going to select either augmented or diminished triads. There are no augmented or diminished triads in drill number one. There's also an ear training guide lecture that goes into this in more detail. This says the Music 101 playlist, but you'll actually find that in the lectures tab in your Musical Core playlist. It's the same lecture. Just look for the ear training guide lecture. Listen to that first. You can also read more about triads in chapters 24 and 25. You can get a little bit ahead of yourself here and just learn the basic concept of why these triads are different. And that should help you to identify these. But a very simple trick for now for your training drill number one is that a major triad is going to sound somewhat happy. A minor triad is going to sound somewhat sad. So the major triad will sound brighter 
and happy. The minor triad will sound somewhat sunken in, maybe even depressed and sad. It, it won't be as bright as a major triad. So let's listen to this first example and see if we can identify it. That's the first triad. That's the second triad. So when you listen to this, notice how the first triad First, we hear it played what we call melodically, where each individual note of the triad is played separately, and then it's played with all three notes of the triad, or also known as a chord, together, which we call harmonically. So if a triad is played separated, where you hear each individual note, we call that melodic. If it's played with all three notes at the same time, we call that harmonic. So each one of these triads is first played melodically and then harmonically. And then there's a break and then you hear the next triad. So listen one more time. It sounds kind of sad. It sounds a little happier. Now if you have a really good ear, all the notes are the same between both triads, between the first triad and the second triad. The only difference is the middle note the second note that's played. Listen one more time and notice that when the first triad is played, the second note in the triad sounds just a little bit lower in pitch than the second note in the second triad. So here's the first triad. And here's the second triad. Could you hear how that second triad is just a little bit higher on the second note than the second note in the first triad? What that means, since the first triad, the second, uh, the second note is lower, that makes it a minor triad. So our answer here is minor triad. So you save your answer, and then you'll get another question. So let's do one more. And these will change every time you complete this drill so that you're constantly getting new triads to listen to but they'll always be major or minor for the first drill. So let's see if we can identify this one. So again, the first triad, the second note sounds a little bit lower than the second note of the second triad. Listen one more time. And the second triad just sounds a little bit brighter, a little happier. So it's not a major triad because in the first triad, we had a note that was lower than the second note in the second triad. So this is also a minor triad. Save your answer. Let's see if we can get a major triad first. So listen one more time. So if you said the first triad was major, you'd be correct. So you just go through these drills until you can get them, until you can identify all 10 intervals or however many there are, or chords, whatever is being tested in that particular drill with 100% accuracy ideally. It says 90% or higher, but you should really aim for 100% and you should aim to be able to identify these triads on the first try. You shouldn't have to keep pressing play and listening to the audio file over and over again, but if you have to do that, that's perfectly fine at first. It's more important that you take your time at first and gradually you will increase the speed at which you can identify these various chords and uh, triads and intervals that we're going to be learning in this course. So we go back to our schedule here and we see that we also have to work on your practice routine. So your practice routine is something that you're just going to practice daily and there's two things for level one that you have to practice. That's daily routine number one and mirror exercise one and two in the workbook. So we click on the workbook link and just a note it tells you what link to click on for each one of these sections. So for the reading, click the textbook link.
For the ear training and theory drills, click the assignments link. For the practice routine, click the workbook link. And the interval training is also available in the workbook link. So let's go over to the workbook link and I'm just going to show you where all these files are. But in a separate lecture, I'll actually go over each one of these files and how to use them. So for the workbook, you're going to see five sections. There's really only two that you have to be concerned with. The daily routines in section one and the mirror exercise in section two. If you want additional training, if you're taking this course with a private instructor who can help you, the rhythm training and the sight singing are optional components that will help you develop your ability to read written rhythms and to sing melodies at sight. If you don't have an instructor, then you have to get really good at the information taught in lesson one and use a keyboard to play the individual notes that you hear that you see in the sight singing example. And you'll have to learn how to count properly for the rhythm training. I will provide a brief video that discusses rhythm training and sight singing, but for the most part, those are best completed under the guidance of an actual instructor. So for the daily routines, if you click on this, what's going to happen is you're going to see a series of PDF files that are labeled daily routine one through seven. You work on each daily routine based on the schedule. And ideally, you would sing along with the audio file, which is available over here. If you click on this link, it'll open up a selection of audio files that you can open in your favorite media player, iTunes or whatever you use. So when you click on the daily routines, essentially what will happen when you click on the audio file, you'll hear four clicks, which give you a tempo, and then you'll hear the daily routine played. So ideally, you should sing along with the daily routine. And I'm going to have to show you that in a different video. But the same thing with the mirror exercises. You just sing along with the audio file. And here's the audio file. If you look over on the right hand side, you see mirror exercises. These are all the audio files you can download. For the interval training, all you have to do is download this package and you'll see 17 audio files within the interval training package and you just listen to the recommended audio files based on the schedule so for level one all you do is just one day per week once per day you listen to interval training one two and three and I'm going to show you how to do that as well in a different lecture Finally, when you click on grades, you can see how you're doing on each one of these drills. It will tell you whether or not you got the 90% or higher. It'll display as points out of 100 points. So if you get 90 points, then you're ready to continue to level two. But make sure you get 90 points on both of these drills. That's very important. And if you can't hear these intervals and these chords and you can't complete the ear training drills, do not get frustrated. Just continue to practice daily routine number one for level one and mirror exercise one and two every day until eventually your ear becomes accustomed to these basic musical elements. Also, keep listening to interval training one, two, and three. So ideally, you don't spend more than 30 to 45 minutes a day practicing your training skills. It's a small investment, but if you do it, you will develop your ear. It will just take some time. Some people will develop faster than others, but I'm going to save the ear training discussion for another topic so you can quickly access it. Because once you know how to use a website, you should be in pretty good shape.